Well, here's a familiar sound. And at long last, after four years of cruising, we finally bump into Kevin, country house gent on board Aslan. What a fabulous sound. Great to meet him and have a chat and help him through the lock. And uh, hopefully our paths will cross again sooner or later. How you doing, Kev? Safe journeys? Yep, I'm uh, slowly making my way to Scare Castle Tunnel. Oh, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Only about another 20 locks to go. Take care, all the best. See you again, Richard. Safe journeys. It was great uh, meeting up with Kevin the other day, wasn't it? It was. It's been, um, I can remember you sitting and watching him long before we got about. We used to sit and watch Kevin and um, yeah, to finally meet him was lovely. It was an honour to help him. <laughs> yeah, because it was Kevin and Robbie and uh, David probably, wasn't it, that uh, we used to watch right at the beginning were inspirational for us to do this life. It was, yeah. And there we get loads of people saying how inspired they are by what <laughs> we're doing to do this life. Sorry about that. <laughs> so the boat's back in the water. We've uh, had the, all the little bits and bobs done that we needed doing to the boat. And the stern glands fixed. But surprise of all surprises, they actually blacked the hull for us and painted all the way up to the gunnels as well, which wasn't expected. So she looks absolutely gorgeous again. Yeah, well, she did. <laughs> yes. she's, she's got a few war wounds already now. That yeah, matter. we have come through a few locks and uh, banging and a crashing, as you'll see later in this video. <laughs> so what are you weaving, Fran? Um, this is going to be a summer scarf, and I think it's going to take me forever because I'm weaving it in really, really fine silk and wool on a cotton warp, and it's going to take me a long, long while, but I wanted it lightweight for summer. Um, there's a thicker one here, which is going to be a, a V cowl, just to go around your neck. Again, very summery one. I've just finished a couple of wall hangings. I haven't done wall hangings for ages, but I've just done a couple of wall hangings, which are in the shop. And um, if I get my skates on, these will be in the shop in about, well, maybe after the weekend, I'll get these both in the shop. So have a look. Well, it's just like driving a brand new boat again. She looks really resplendent, all painted up and touched up. I think Fran's a bit uh, worried about scraping her against the locks again. Look how good she looks. She looks a treat.
paradise. Absolutely gorgeous. Cool breeze coming across though. But um, today, well, it's about two o'clock, isn't it? We were supposed to be At setting least. up a bit early today. We've With been shopping. Few jobs to do. There's, we knew and remember from last time that there's a little farm shop behind us. They sell their own eggs and some local produce. So we had to wander up there. And then we had a couple of essential bits, boring stuff to do in town. But it took us about three hours, I guess, didn't it? Didn't it? And it, we've come back and it's so lovely. We've now decided we're going to move. Yeah, so we've got five locks going up tiley locks here. Beautiful setting, beautiful cutting in the sandstone, through the sandstone rock. Um, but the thing about this first lock especially is the bywash that's coming down the excess water from the pound above, swishing into the canal just before the lock. And we watched some poor <laughs> boater go crashing into the lock yesterday. The water took him away. So I think we'll have the uh, bow thrusters on. <laughs> Let's and we'll get the on, lock we? ready before and open before we get anywhere near it. So yeah. we can get a little bit of speed up and hopefully that will carry on straight. If you stop and then the bywash hits you, you've had it really. It, it took this boat really sideways across the canal. So who knows? So we're just going to get up these five locks and uh, maybe go a mile or two onwards. Find somewhere remote that we can just moor up and spend two or three days out in the country, in the quiet. Yes. The town's been really busy, hasn't it, with people yeah. coming past. And um, at the weekend, we're going to Norbury. It's bank holiday weekend, so we're going to Norbury Junction, and there's a boat festival on, I think it's a festival. And uh, the Beanie Boat Company's going to be there. And uh, we've had a few, quite a lot of messages with them. And not only do they make fabulous hats and knitwear, so clever, they've now got a wool shop on the boat. Well, you know, I'm one over already. And um, they make their own soap, so it's just going to be done. But I don't think we'll go all the way into Norbury. It's going to be busy there. We'll be about a mile or so out. Yeah, we'll walk in, yeah. Um, but we're looking forward to that. I'm hoping there's going to be a beer boat there. Well, there is a beer boat. I don't think they're here. I think they're elsewhere at the moment, the beer boat. So, um, oh, well. <laughs> I'm sure you'll work something out, my dear. <laughs> so, right, locks ahead. Let's see how we get on. Right, here goes. Wish me luck. That wasn't anywhere near as fierce as yesterday, was it? Do you reckon? What did you just say? I said that was just your practice one. That one is the fierce one. Three on as bad. And luck would have it, the 
somebody coming down. Early luck's done for, thank God. Those bywashes are a bit lethal. It's nothing you could do. You did really well, did everything right, but you know. And also, coming out the gates weren't opening properly, were they? No. It's caught the side of the boat a couple yeah, of times. A nice couple of scratches on the side of the boat, on the whole, anyways. So thanks very much, it's early luck. And I'm um, just going through Woods Eve's cutting now, which is really deep cutting. And uh, yesterday we came for a walk and we tried to get back this way but the towpad is closed due to landslips. So we had a bit of a diversion all the way around. But it was a lovely walk anyway. So if there's landslips, there's loads of trees that have fallen down. I think we need to get through this bit as quick as we can, don't well, we? Well, he says at the beginning <laughs> on the sign, for your boaters, for your safety, stick to the two miles an hour speed limit. Oh. Why? You'd think you'd just want to... <laughs> Through here, wouldn't yeah, you? There's lots of stones under the water though. You can't get near to the side at all because there's stones falling in. Um, there's a bit that we're just coming up to now that looks like it's all slipped down. All the stones are in the water. So fortunately it's not that busy today. There's no one coming the other way yeah, stick to yet. The middle. <laughs> that is It's a bit cooler. <laughs> We're back to scarves and I've seen boaters with hats and woolly hats and gloves on. So Oh, it's really, really cool today. But uh, we've moored up here um, just before um, Norbury Junction, not far from Norbury Junction. And uh, it's a beautiful spot, but there's a shelf running under the water all the way along. So we're having to put the tyres out to uh, keep the boat from banging against the shelf under the water. But um, it's not too bad, is it? It's only when we're moving around a lot inside that it bumps, bumps. Normally we wouldn't stop if there's a shelf, but we just really wanted to be on our own for a few days. We've, yeah. we've been, not in big towns, but we've been among other boats in towns for quite a while. And we just wanted to be isolated for a bit. So it was worth putting up and putting the tires down for this fab view and to be Watch completely this. on our own. Look at that for a view. You can see the reeking there, just peeking up above the hedgerow. The reeking are peeking. And then further behind that, I don't think you can see it on here, but uh, there's Breeden Hill, which is beautiful. So we're off for a walk. We're going to the woods. We were going to get up at four o'clock. We were. <laughs> to go and record the dawn chorus, but we ended up not going to bed till it got 11 or yeah, yeah, It's just really like that, late yeah. for us, it isn't is. it? It is. So we're going to have to wait till tomorrow to do that. We're going to wrecky it out now, <laughs> go and have a look, and then we'll set the alarm for 4.30 in the morning and uh, catch the dawn chorus. Yes. So we're going to go to bed at 9 o'clock tonight, yes. I think, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, off for a walk, come along and uh, see what we can find. Well, the irony's not lost on me. We love to hear the birdsong in the mornings, especially when we wake up. 
But uh, one thing we've noticed and we haven't heard for at least three years now is the sound of a cuckoo. And uh, they're becoming ever decreasing in numbers. They come from Africa to spend the summer here and then lay eggs in other birds' nests and then bugger off back to Africa. But we also haven't seen swifts and swallows. We saw two swifts the other day and that's the only two we've seen. And by this time of year, when you look up in the sky, you usually see them flitting around and chirruping, flying under bridges and in and out of and around farm buildings. But no, sadly, nothing this year to speak of. Such a pity. So uh, if you hear a cuckoo, let us know where you are and when you heard it. That'd be great news. That's the woods we're going to, but uh, there's not a path directly into them over the canal. So we're going up this road for uh, about a quarter of a mile and turn right along that hedge line, you can see. A couple of videos ago, I was picking this stuff, Sticky Willy, um, and promised to try and cook it and share a recipe with you but it really wasn't worth it because it was not good. Bloody awful. <laughs> Apparently they ate it in Russia as a vegetable. And I'm sure if you were hungry, you would, but um, we're not that hungry. If you don't know what it is, it's this, it grows really long and it's called Sticky Willy because it just sticks to you. Um, but after researching it, I did find that these new shoots make a fantastic spring tonic drink. And all you do is pick these, wash them, pack them into a jar and cover with water overnight and drink it the next day. And it really is, even Rich will say, it's quite pleasant. Cold water or hot water? Just cold water. You don't put hot water because apparently that um, destroys some of the nutrients in it. Just a jug or a jar of cold water overnight. You can apparently add a slice of lemon or mint if you want to make it tastier, but it actually tastes quite fresh and spring-like, doesn't it? Yeah, one glass is enough. It is quite a strong yeah. diuretic. It has to clean your kidneys and your liver out. So they say, um, I think it's about a litre, but you can drink a couple of glasses a day. Um, I'm only on a glass a day and I do feel really fit and strong and, and well. So yeah, sticky willy. of bluebells. I guess in another week or so it's going to be fantastic in here, Fran. It's just a few days too early. It's obviously quite sheltered, isn't it? behind us is Japanese knotweed, a pernicious weed in your garden, difficult to get rid of. And uh, I think I read in the paper, you'd no longer have to declare it if you're selling your house. You used to have to inform the potential buyer that you had Japanese knotweed in your garden. But I don't think that's uh, any longer required. The roots go down, don't they? The roots go down so far and yeah. spread, it's really hard to get rid of. But apparently it's delicious to eat. Oh, is it? Apparently, yeah, you, you can eat it and it is delicious, rivaling rhubarb by all accounts. Oh, really? Which bit do you eat then? Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going home, I can research. We're we coming back tomorrow. I think so... you can eat the juicy stems oh, of it. Really? So uh, uh, don't take my word for it, folks, because uh, I'm no expert, but yeah, I think you almost certainly can eat Japanese nutweed. Where's my book? <laughs> Oh dear, I opened my big mouth. Japanese, Japanese what, not weed crumble tomorrow. Japanese what need? What need? <laughs> <laughs> What's that with what needs? <laughs> or with what needs beer in it? How about that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> what need nice. and what needs crumble? <laughs> Countryside. Can I start again, please? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I often wonder about the different reasons that people live narrowboat life and take on this, this way of living. Um, for us, I think one of the things that make it really special are these walks that we go on. We like walking anyway. We love just the fitness and the outside life, countryside. But everywhere we go, it's different. We're walking somewhere different. We're exploring the countryside. We're finding new plants, new trees. Mm. And every place is so different. And we're learning all the time. It is rarely a walk goes by when we go back and I don't have to look something up. And we've just been looking at fiddlehead ferns, which I know, I think we call them something else actually. Americans call them fiddlehead yeah. ferns, which I know are edible. Yeah. I don't know enough about it. So I've got to go back and look that up again. We've got to look up the Japanese knotweed. But it's just wonderful that we're just learning all these different places and exploring all the time. I don't and know what birds you think. birds <laughs> especially as well, the new bird song, you know. And, yeah. and it, apparently birds do have different accents from uh, different parts of the country. Yeah. But we went on a walk the other day that ended up being 10 miles. It was supposed to be six, but we had a diversion or two. And um, it took us, what, five or six hours, didn't it? Because we're just gawping and wonder at everything and talking and looking and wondering what things are and uh, just sitting and staring. It's just a wonderful thing. And, it, and it's things that have been there all our lives. Things like the cow parsley and the, uh, these ferns again. It's stuff that's always been there, but we've never really been aware of. Um, I've got a lot of catching up to do to learn all about this stuff, really. You better get on, girl. <laughs> what have you got other plans for me? You told me to eat that Japanese nut, but <laughs> now I'm wondering. So it's 4.45 in the morning and we're back off to Knighton Woods for the uh, dawn chorus. And it's probably just as well I can't see our blurry faces, friend. Definitely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the things we do for you guys, eh? We've had a quick slug of coffee. Yeah. The flask is in the bag. Doggies didn't even move over the sofa, so we've left them behind because Archie uh, charges around all over the place and we disturb anything that we're going to see. Um, I don't think they wanted to come anyway. No, they're quite happy. And we've got a big packet of biscuits in the bag. <laughs> As you can hear, not got to the woodlands yet, but they've already started. And it's the blackbird that seems to kick it all off. There you go. And you can hear the blackbirds all around us. In one right in front of us and there's a few behind. It's amazing. Apologies if we look a bit blurry eyed. That's because we are <laughs> a bit blurry eyed. Well, it's just deafening. I just think it's calmed down a bit now, hasn't it? About five minutes ago or so, it was really loud. It seems to go in waves, doesn't it? They mm. just sort of slow down and have a little rest. You feel like you just got to talk quietly not to disturb them, so I hope you can hear me. Um, but just constant. And as you sit and listen, it does. It's, it's almost just like a tinnitus, isn't it? It is. It's constant. It's so loud. 
Fantastic. How they hear each other above all the noise is beyond me. I guess they just tune in to one particular song, don't they, to listen to their mates. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I think it's been well worthwhile, don't you, friend? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So we're going to sit here until they shut up. <laughs> have a cup of coffee and some biscuits. And we'll, we'll see go back you on... to bed. <laughs> we'll go back to bed. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>